Welcome to Projects for All. My name is Mike, and today, today we're going to look at Top Don's thermal imaging camera. They sent this down here for free for me to show you guys, and we're going to walk around. We'll have a look at the image and see the menu and check out what you get when you buy a budget thermal camera from Amazon. Let's get in here and have a look. If you've never spent any time playing around with a thermal camera, I will tell you they are a lot of fun. If you want to pause your screen, here are your specs. These can also be crazy useful for diagnosing problems, automotive, motorcycles, in the house or job site. Being able to tell where the heat is and the temperature difference of things can be very, very useful. Very nice, compact, feels very solid. Got a trigger, nice feeling buttons on this. Clicky, everything's uniform. Got a quarter 20 mount, so you can put it on a tripod if you want. I spent the last week or so playing around with this thing, comparing it to different units. We have a FLIR that we're going to compare this to. Uh, it's sort of comparable in price. This is a FLIR TG267 model. It is a little bit smaller than the Top Don. They look very similar. This one runs under $400. This one is right around in the neighborhood of $500. This one in my hand is about 10 years old, but you can still buy these off the website for about $500. Bucks. Let's have a good look at this, and we'll check out the menu system, and then we'll go walk around and have a look. Other things you get in the box, universal charging brick, USB-A, and you get a bunch of adapters for different places in the world. I won't lie to you, I don't even know where these are for. This looks like Europe. Plugs in my house in Italy look like this. Obviously this will be the one we need. Reasonably inexpensive plastic. But I did charge the unit with this and it works just fine. There you go. Comes with a USB-C to USB-A charging cable to work with your brick. Output, five volts at two amps. I have this all charged up for us. Like I said, I spent a week or so playing around with this thing. And it is actually very impressive. For sub $400 available on Amazon, serialized, I won't lie to you, I'm very impressed. It does refresh occasionally. The only other thing to look at under the cover is a USB-C port for updating the unit. And it came with a 16 gig micro SD card. The slot is right here. Max capacity for this is 16 gigs. Nice rubber cover. Everything about this unit feels like nice quality. All right, I'm gonna do my best to hold this as steady as possible so you guys can see the menu stuff. About 10 seconds to load up and be working. So here's the menu. You have this small menu across the bottom that starts you out. Hot spot, cold spot, close, isotherm, the middle is palette, so you can change the color scheme to make it easier to see what you're doing. Iron is the default, we'll stick with iron. And then you have settings. Emissivity, temperature, distance, temperature scale, high low alerts, photo auto save. This is important, this will take photos and video. The photos are in JPEG, the videos are in MP4, there's no conversions that need to be done, at least on my end. Everything was downloaded straight to my PC. The, the screenshots you see in this are all just easily pulled over to my MacBook, but you can set it so it automatically saves them and doesn't ask you if you want to save the picture with a preview. You're able to calibrate the image, units obviously, you can select the units you want. You can select how long before it auto powers off. System settings, you get a whole new set of menus. You get device information, factory reset, which we don't wanna do, format a new SD card, super resolution I've been playing with and I don't see a difference personally, but there might be a difference I'm not noticing. You get display brightness, three settings, adjust your time and day stamp, in case you're using this for work and you need to know language, obviously get a whole slew of languages. We will not change because then we're screwed. And you got system updates. It'll search for a system update. You have to put it on the SD card. I did not do that. 
So to take a picture, press the trigger one time. There's your option to save, go back, cancel. If we pull the trigger again, we can hit save right in the middle there and we'll save that picture. It's that simple. To take a video, long press the trigger until you see the time counter there and now we're taking a video. Stop it, press the trigger again and there you go. Gallery is this button here. Go to your gallery, look at your videos and pictures. Nicely done, no BS. Press that button, gives you a work light. Press it again, turns them off. Very simple stuff. Simple, easy to use, no BS. Very, very nice. There is an option here, which is why I have this out. Top Don's app is TD View, which I have downloaded. And we'll let it make changes. And we pull this up here. With the included cord, you can connect this to a PC, which I should have untangled here before we got started. We are using this because this is the only Windows PC that I actually own. This is technically a PC. I know it is not the most professional looking one, but this one's Windows 11 and is probably comparable to a Surface or something in that lineup. This is a Legion Go. Just like that, we're able to project. There's a lot of options with this software and I'm not gonna get into all of it, but it does work. I had to use an adapter because this is USB-A, this is USB-C only on this. I do not have a Windows PC with USB-A, so it works good. You can project to this. There's a ton of options. And it works as advertised. I didn't have any trouble. I downloaded the app. I plug in the device and that's it. It's pretty cool, man. Here's what the gallery looks like. I took a few pictures on a really hot day. It's about 102 outside. Just walking around in my house, testing this out. There's Ben, the orange cat. He's the same color on a thermal camera as he is in real life, pretty much. Look how cold his nose is. This is my kitchen on a 100 degree day. It really shows to emphasize how insulation works in your house. This is my top of my basement stairs, looking down at my basement. There's my fireplace. This, this is the bedroom upstairs. And this was the most shocking photos I took that day. The weather had just broke. It was 103 all day and a storm rolled in and it knocked down to about 80. I figured I'd take some pictures while everything was super heated up. You can see all the studs. You can actually see all the screws in the walls behind the drywall. Oh, there's the little trap door for my attic space. It's in my bedroom, hallway. Look at the screws. It's wild, man. It's the corner of my bedroom. Not good. House built in 1955. Very good images out of this budget camera. You can see the refresh rate is a little bit different. You can see me in the reflection of the window over there on the top left. That's my reflection. But they do tend to have different refresh rates, although both will stutter. There's a cat in the sunspot. I do like the high-low on the top down. This one times out too fast. It's probably in the settings. And it does take a while to load. Come on. Come on. Uh, there we go. I don't see a zoom feature on the FLIR. It could be there, but I just might not be finding it here. There's only up and down buttons. Magnified twice, magnified four times. So three levels of magnification on the top time. All right, so here we are in the back corner of my basement. Sorry, that's my furnace running. Not hard to tell which side is the hot side and which side is the cold side. You can see the exhaust exiting right there. And let's look at the flare until it updates there. There's the flare. Personally, I think this one's better. I'm shocked. I was not expecting 
to show the flare this much. I just figured it'd be nice to see a contrast for what I would consider a professional tool versus an Amazon budget tool. Almost always the professional tool is better. And I mean, we could chalk it up to how much money you spent, you know, honestly. But in this case, I get a better picture. I'm able to see more detail, I think, in this one here. I think that picture is excellent, personally. Here's the flare. One last shot here. You have the hot side. Copper pipe goes past the gas pipe right there. You can see the intersection right on the crosshairs. And you can see how the hot water pipe is heating up that gas pipe as it goes past it. They're, they're not touching, but they're pretty close. They're zoomed in. Not good, you guys tell me. Let's see if we can see how this heats up when I cut this. The battery I just used, but the saw is stone cold. It's been sitting outside this whole time. You can see the individual cells in the battery again. So here's a battery that's stone cold. We haven't been using it. Here's a battery that's stone cold with a charger that has finished charging it days ago. You can see the charger's lit up, but the battery's cold. Put my fingerprint on it. There's the battery. There's my fingerprint. Cold battery, hot charger. This battery, here's the rigid battery. We just got done sawing a four by six width. <laughs> and that is downright creepy, huh? I mean, it's only at 91 degrees, but I mean, you can see the individual cells in that battery. That is creepy. Doesn't necessarily feel warm. It's gonna have my handprint on it now, but you can't even see it because it's just glowing. Here's some more crazy stuff. There's a cold, stone cold battery. There's a battery that just got done doing a little drilling. It contrasts to my hand. So my hand is the hot part now, so the battery doesn't look that hot. When we get rid of my hand, the battery's the hottest thing in the frame. I mean, only 77 degrees of it, but I love that it gives you your high-low range here. Get your high-low range here, and it shows you max and minimum there. There's the Cirque Saws just starting to cool off. It's not very hot. 76.9, 77 degrees. But we warm that sucker off just a little bit. Well, tell me what you think about this. I like it a lot, actually. The menu system is professionally done. It's clear. I can't think of any adjustments I would want that this doesn't have. The picture, in my opinion, is outstanding. It's very easy to see the contrast between hot and cold, whereas the flare is kind of muddled. You get a lot of like, you get a lot of warm spots where maybe there isn't warm spots or bleed over in the picture. This is very clear and crisp. I don't know how long it'll last, but for the moment it's on sale for $280. There's a coupon in the listing for Amazon. I don't know how you could beat that for 280 bucks. It is almost half the price of the FLIR and it has a better picture in my opinion. So you guys tell me what you think. I don't have a bad thing to say about this one. Quarter 20 mount on the bottom, the FLIR has it too, but comes in handy. It has every single thing that I would want in a thermal camera for a price probably half what I would expect to pay for one. If you need one, I recommend giving this one a shot. One of the better Amazon products I think we've ever tested, although I really like some of the laser levels too. Some of those were really nice, but this, this is pretty good. You guys tell me what you think, leave a comment, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.